This is a uh, 2008 GMC Acadia. It came in for uh, EVAP code. It has a stuck open purge valve. I got a purge valve already. But when I uh, last time when I took this apart, I noticed a lot of oil in the uh, in intake boot. I have a and that, of course, could be indication of uh, malfunctioning in a PCV system. You can see. Uh, uh, go for this way. I hope you guys can see that. There's quite a bit of oil in it. Let's see. Yeah, last time was actually it was even more than uh, than what it is now, but you get an idea. It's it's a uh, has a lot of oil in it. <clears throat> now the PCV valve it's on the uh, on the other head. Now this is the, uh, what I'm going to do now first, I'm going to try to test this uh, PCV system. I'm going to use, I'm going to check the vacuum in a uh, crankcase. Now the vacuum in a uh, PCV system is very, very low. Kind of like vacuum we have in uh, EVAP system, so you cannot check that with vacuum gauge. You have to have a pressure sensor that can, that can measure vacuum in, in uh, inches of water. Generally what I see on the GMC vehicles is around uh, four to five inches of water. And uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use a uh, GM fuel tank pressure sensor. And um, I got it hooked up to battery. Here's my uh, five volt regulator. I'm gonna hook it up to my lab scope and uh, I'm going to uh, pull the dipstick out. And I'm gonna install this sensor into the uh, dipstick tube. Now I have a um, known good waveform that I've got from uh, my Suburban and uh, let's uh, take a look at that waveform first and then we'll uh, we'll look at the, we're going to check the pressure, in, I mean the vacuum inside this crankcase as well. As we can see Okay, here's a waveform, and uh, we have a. Uh, this is not good. This car off. This is pretty much, you know, atmospheric pressure. And then uh, this is a wide open throttle test, and uh, you can see that around uh, four. That's like uh, 3.7 inches of water. 3.3, and uh, the wide open throttle. Pressure went up to 1.9 inches of water. The lowest point was around uh, five inches of water, and uh, but average seems like around 3.7. So it's very very low vacuum. And uh, so let's go ahead and uh, test this car to see what we got. I'm gonna press start. Now with my on my lab scope, I uh, did customize my probe so that I can uh, actually. Instead of look, look at the voltage, look at the pressure on, the, on the, this, this uh, pressure sensor. And right now, as you can see, it's a point, point 0.2, which basically it's, uh, it's atmospheric pressure. And I'm going to start the car, and we should see some, some vacuum in the, in the crankcase. You can see we had a little bit of vacuum at the beginning. Now it's pretty much going back to atmospheric pressure. It tells me that it's pretty much we don't have any vacuum in a, in a crankcase. You can see there's not much. You can see there's not much vacuum in the, in a crankcase at all. It seems like that the PCB valve is plugged up. 
And uh, if I pull the fresh side off and I, if I pluck it up, now we can see it can build up the vacuum. So let go, goes back up. I'm at the valve right now. I have these pliers on it. I pull the hose off of it. It's pretty stuck, so I'll have to wiggle it and try to. It's just a press fit, but I'm gonna need two hands to get this out. I got it cracked loose a little bit. I'm using actually these pliers for. Um, let's see if I can I'll turn it this way. It's almost out. I'll have to do some more work. I think I can get it out. I'm just going to use now a flat screwdriver. There you go, it's coming out. Pretty, uh, pretty plugged up. Okay, well let's put the new one in and see. And we're gonna measure pressure again. This is a very tight fit. I'm trying to push it down. There's just no way. I'm not sure which way I'm gonna have to maybe put the socket or something to push it down further. Well, this was more difficult than I anticipated it's going to be. First I got myself burned right there. Having my hand on my arm on the, on the exhaust. I didn't realize it was pretty hot. And as I was just, you know getting in there pushing it down, you know I got my arm burnt. <laughs> but what I'm using is this uh, extreme access, I believe it's called one of the Pittsburgh tools. And uh, so basically, I'm almost there, so I think it's like a 13 millimeter. So I got it over the valve, and I'm pretty much just, as you can see, I'm just tapping it. Because we got the coolant hose around on top of it, and it's really strange. <laughs> but anyhow, it's in now. Okay. Well, this was more difficult than I anticipated it's going to be. First, I got myself burned right there, having my hand on my arm on the, on the exhaust. I didn't realize it was pretty hot, and as I was just, you know getting in there pushing it down, you know I got my arm burned. <laughs> but what I'm using is this. Uh, Extreme access, I believe it's called one of the Pittsburgh tools. And uh, so basically, I'm almost there. So I think it's like a 13 millimeter. So I got it over the valve, and I'm pretty much just, as you can see, I'm just tapping it. Because we got the coolant hose around on top of it, and it's really strange <laughs> but anyhow it's in now okay I'm just gonna put the hose back in and be okay all right let's check the pressure now okay it's hooked up and uh, let's go ahead and uh, I'm not sure what I would do if I wouldn't have that socket you know it's just uh, 
very very unusual setup. I mean, it was, it was so tight in that in the valve cover that you just have to, you know, push it in. But it's just got no room to do it. And uh, okay, uh, I got my uh, pressure sensor back in uh, tube, dipstick tube, and uh, let's go ahead and uh, do it again. slowly building up the vacuum in it. From 5.3 I was expecting to see more, but it's definitely you know better than what it was. Yeah, uh, plug this now. Let's see what. Okay. Okay, so this is atmospheric, that's a point two. Put it back in. One point three a vacuum, inches of vacuum. Oh, it's definitely working better than, than it was. I was expecting to see more than that, but... Let's see, I think this... This end is pretty clean. Let me try to clean up this, this tool here. So then this tube is important as well. You can see if I take it out, it goes back to almost atmospheric pressure. Now if I this I'm not sure about this side here. Pretty clean. It's open. It would be nice to have known good car. Anyway, we, we definitely could see a difference in a in a pressure in a vacuum. Well, it is what it is. I mean, it's working now, so everything should be fine. I'm going to clean up the intake pretty good and uh, 
I would like to see more vacuum in it, but you know, maybe I should check this uh, this hose as well. I'm gonna I'm gonna disconnect this hose and clean this this hose as well to see what happens. All right. Okay, let's start it up again. much of a difference after we clean up the uh, hose. We rev it up a couple of times. Well, it is what it is. Again, I was expecting to see a little bit more vacuum in a in a crank, but I got I got everything cleaned up, all the hoses and everything. I, I'm gonna clean up the uh, boot as well, but that I don't think that should matter really. And uh, but anyway, this is the. Uh, it would be nice to have an own good one for this engine. Again, I've seen a lot more vacuum than. It didn't make a difference by, you know, changing the uh, PCV valve, no question, but not as much as I would like to see. Now I've seen, uh, I've seen some people will drill the hole, but I'm not sure, they enlarge these holes here on the, on the valve itself. I'm not sure if that's a smart idea or not. Could that cause large vacuum leak, internal vacuum leak and throw off the fuel trim? I was going to actually do that to see what, what we would do, but seeing how difficult it is to get this valve in a place, I don't want to mess around. I mean, I had a really hard time to put the new one in. And uh, but anyhow, one point two inches of water of vacuum. Hmm. Well, I'll just have to leave it as it is and um, check this car maybe in a couple of weeks and we'll clean up the boot and see what happens. But
But anyway, this is how you guys can confirm your PCV system by using this uh, GM uh, fuel tank pressure sensor because it's such a low vacuum in a crankcase you can't use vacuum gauge. Now if you if you use a vacuum gauge and you can see that you can read the vacuum then you really have excessive <coughs> the internal vacuum leak. But it is what it is. We'll see. Still the same. See how far it'll go. I don't know if I don't know what else to do. I mean, it, I've done everything that I could think of. Like this fresh side is clean, and this valve is new. This vacuum hose is clean. The intake, I don't see any obstructions here. That's fine as well. So. Well, alright, we'll see what happens. Okay, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye bye.